Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to see all your smiling faces. Most of you, anyway. I'm feeling very, uh, very stood out. Everyone else gets to have a nice introductory video, but I don't get one today um, because uh, we're doing some different preaches at the different sites today. So this is a bit of a site-specific one just for you guys at CARES, uh, which is great. So my name's Alex. I think you've seen uh, some of me up here before. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. It's not going to be classic life churchy preachy thing. There's going to be a bit more. Uh, we're going to shake things up a little bit, but it's going to be. It's going to be. I got a whoop over there. That's great. So I'd like to start by telling you that today is a good day. I have got some good news for you. <laughs> Big thanks to Kevin, by the way. Um, I've got some good news for you today. I believe that Father God has got an amazing gift for you today. It's the time for giving, isn't it? And that gift is the Holy Spirit. Not in a far off, out there, wishy-washy, kind of nebulous kind of way. Not in a kind of only for the super Christians that are up here and not for little old me down here kind of a way. But in a here and now and today and for you kind of way. And it is good news, every single last one of you. So if you're a believer and you've been saved by Jesus, then the Holy Spirit is for you and a gift for you, designed and purpose built to be inside of you, here and now, for 21st century Britain. And this is the good news. Um, and you know what? It's just fantastic. It's great news. If you've not met yet, Jesus, not yet met Jesus and you don't have Jesus inside of you, please come and have a chat to us afterwards. We would love to introduce you to the most amazing um, transformation in your life. Let me just pray first. Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity for us just to be here together in this place. I thank you for your presence here. I thank you, Jesus, that you, you gave your life for us. And I thank you, Jesus, that when you left this earth, you left us with this amazing gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, why are we here? You have no idea how happy I was to see what I'm about to say get touched on already today. What is our mission? What is our purpose? Before Jesus left this earth, he said these words, sometimes known as Mim McNeese mission statement, otherwise known as the Great Commission. Uh, and here it is, Matthew 28. Jesus said, almost the last thing he said before he left this earth, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. Okay, so Jesus makes it pretty clear. Um, and he tells his disciples and his followers, that's ultimately us, to go and make disciples. Okay, what about us here and now in Life Church Southampton? So we have, perfect, uh, we have this on our bottles. This is our kind of mission statement. There's probably a better name for it. Um, and that's it there, bringing life to every community. It's, it's a similar sort of thing really, isn't it? So if we have Jesus in us, our kind of mission statement is to go and just share that with the people around us. It's, it's the same thing effectively. Um, what about commission? We are part of a family of churches called Commission. Um, Commission have a uh, vision as well, which I'm actually dig out from their website. Uh, so we'll have a look at that as well. And here it is. You may have seen this uh, up on a banner somewhere near you, maybe at this church. Their vision is to see thousands of lives transformed through hundreds of churches in tens of nations. It's quite a big thing, isn't it? So go. Off you go then. Go and do that lot, everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's quite a big challenge, isn't it? Um, and I don't know what life's like for you, but I'm busy and I've got responsibilities. I'm a dad, I've got a job, I've got things going on. How on earth am I meant to you know, go and do all of that stuff? Doesn't God understand that I've actually got plenty of other things going on? And it's quite hard. It can easily become just another kind of thing you've got to do, isn't it? Um, but it's what, Jesus told us to, it's what Jesus told us to do. So, you know, it's, it's important and we've got to get on with it. And so that's, you know, that's how it is. How am I meant to be some kind of super Christian to go and do all this amazing stuff while I'm still carrying on with all the other things going on in our life and our day job? Surely God understands. Yeah, well, there's good news. Uh, and the good news is that you were never meant to do this stuff on your own. 
You were never meant to do this great commission in your own strength. When Jesus said, go and make disciples, here is the very next thing he said. And in fact, it was the very final thing he said on this earth just before he ascended into heaven. In Acts 1, Jesus said, the last thing he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and Southampton and to the ends of the earth. He didn't say the Southampton bit, but he meant it. And when he said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. Uh, Just a bit of a side note. I love the disciples. What did the disciples do next? Well, they stared into space for a bit. So much so that God sent two angels to appear next to them to basically said, uh, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> Is the next bit that happened. So, fantastic. I love, the disciples are human and, you know, so are we, aren't we? So what happens next? The disciples are given this whacking great big commission to do and Jesus has said, hey, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to be with you. And then these two guys appear and saying, well, off you go then. Um, so they waited in this room, and then we read in Acts 2, something called the Day of Pentecost. This incredible thing happened. Uh, the Holy Spirit came along like a rushing wind, like tongues of fire, and, and all of this fantastic stuff happened. So let's take a bit of a step back then. Jesus gives us this great commission. It sounds pretty tough, but he promises the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you the Holy Spirit is great news and an amazing gift. So I'm quite visual, uh, as you will discover. So I wanted to show you one of the many ways to visualize what the Holy Spirit might be a bit like. And I've got a picture, I believe. Brilliant. (laughs) This is a multi-tool. I was so pleased, actually, the delightful Sean at the back who's been helping us with sound today. um, I knew I was going to put this picture up early, and I saw him. He not only has a multi-tool, but he has it with him, and it is holstered to his waist. I mean... (laughs) Come on. (laughs) And not only that, he said, yeah, I used it this morning to mend Chris's guitar. Um, So that is what the Holy Spirit is a bit bit like. Uh, Another side note, I'll tell you a secret. I don't own one of these, and my life is totally missing one, and I want one. (laughs) Children take note, it's Christmas soon. Just saying. So it's an all-in-one, isn't it? It's a pair of pliers, it's a screwdriver, it's a knife, it's a torch, it's a bottle opener. It's all of these fantastic things all in one go. So why am I telling you this? Because I think the Holy Spirit is a bit like this. I'm going to pull out six things that the Holy Spirit is and why the Holy Spirit is fantastic in your life. So we're going to start with the first one. Um, The Holy Spirit is a guide. The Holy Spirit guides. So... This is uh, Luke 4. Jesus has just been baptized by John the Baptist and a voice came from heaven and the the spirit landed like a dove on his shoulder. Uh, This hasn't happened to me. I've seen that happen to Sai here, um, but not to me. And Jesus, after this, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Who doesn't want a guide in their life? I totally want a guide in my life. How often do you not know whether to turn left or turn right whether to go, whether to say, whether to stop, whether to run, whatever. Um, You perhaps might want to go somewhere nicer than the wilderness, but I completely want a guide in my life, for sure. Number two, the next one, the Holy Spirit reveals. So this is a lovely old chap called Simeon. So Jesus was a baby. Jesus was born. Mary and Joseph took him to the temple um, to be blessed and all of that stuff. And it had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he'd seen the Lord's Christ. Imagine going through life with the Holy Spirit revealing things to you. Amazing. Utterly fantastic. And so Simeon was blessed. He got to see Jesus. He got to pray for him. And uh, fantastic. So the Holy Spirit is a revealer and can reveal things to you. Next one, number three. You get a two for one with this one. The Holy Spirit is a helper and a teacher. So this is Jesus. He was speaking to his disciples. And he said, these things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. I certainly want the helper in my life and I definitely want someone who's going to teach me things because I for sure don't know it all. Um, 
I'm not great understanding all the intricacies of the Bible. If I'm honest with you, I'm not a scholar. I'm not a theologian, although we're blessed to have many in the church who are. Um, I will never be one, so I'm totally up for having the Holy Spirit as a teacher to help me out with all this stuff, for sure. Next one. We're doing well here. Am I encouraging you? The Holy Spirit is a good idea, right? Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what number we're up to. Four, I think. Uh, boldness. Boldness in God. So if we're meant to do this, bringing life to every community, Lark, how do we do that? Because it's hard sometimes, isn't it, to share the good news of Jesus with the neighbor over your wall, isn't it? Because you don't want to be seen as some kind of crackpot or, you know, whatever. So uh, in Acts 4, this is Peter and John uh, with their friends. This is after Jesus had ascended and, and the guys eventually left and all of that stuff. Um, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continue to speak the word of God with boldness. One of the things the Holy Spirit can do is help you to overcome that fear of man, that being afraid of, will I look stupid, whatever. When you've got the Spirit inside you, you cannot help but just share that love with the people around you, yeah. Number five here, uh, the Holy Spirit is a gift which is great. So this is Peter, he's talking to the crowd. This is just after the Holy Spirit had smashed into the room and everyone started speaking weird languages and all sorts of stuff was happening. Um, Peter said to the crowd around them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a gift for you today. There is no charge. And lastly, uh, we read on in uh, Luke 11, the Holy Spirit is given to those who ask, okay? So this is Jesus speaking just after he said, um, you know, what kind of father if you, if your son asks for an egg, would you give him a chocolate covered Brussels sprout or whatever's going on? Um, and he says, no, uh, if you then, though you are evil, which, you know, I certainly am to a degree, um, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly father Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. So ask and it will be given to you. Okay, so these are just six of the things of the Holy Spirit that I've pulled out today. The Holy Spirit is all these wonderful things and the Holy Spirit is a gift for you today. It is good news, but it's your choice, okay? The Holy Spirit is given to those who ask and you can do life as a believer without the Holy Spirit but it is not the way God intended and you will find things much tougher. Let me tell you a story. So shortly after I was married, uh, Charlie and I moved house. We moved into a house with um, almost no furniture. So we needed to get a sofa bed kind of thing. Who can tell me what this thing is? It's a food, who remembers these classic bad boys from the 90s? Who went into Ikea and bought a futon? They were great. They've kind of disappeared. They don't do these things anymore. So we bought a futon. Uh, this was great. So, you know, in our big empty kind of lounge, there was now this sofa come sofa bed thing. So they kind of, it's, if you can see, it's kind of a folded up mattress on top of a wooden frame kind of thing. And you can also kind of pull it and stretch it out and it, and, and it becomes a bed and it's super brilliant, you know, very cheap and all of that good stuff. So uh, we were 90s kids. So we went and bought a futon, bought it home brilliant. Um, and Charlotte declared, I'm going to unpack this thing. I'm going to, I'm going to build it. So I thought, great. I'm going to go off and build it. So I went off and read my Bible or something, <laughs> played computer games. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I went off and played computer and Charlotte built this sofa thing. And she eventually came and found me and said, oh, do you know what? My, my wrists are killing me from doing up all these screws. Can you just finish them off? Because I've put them most of the way in, but there was hundreds of these screws, right? Just need tightening up, tightening up. And I went, yeah, sure. So I went off to the cupboard, got the electric screwdriver out, and bzz, 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 tightened up all these screws. And the look of horror on my wife's face, and shortly afterwards mine, as I'd realized that she had no idea we owned an electric screwdriver. Uh, yeah, it took me a, a little while to that. So it was a learning point for both of us. Charlotte learned we had an electric screwdriver, and I learned to be a bit more uh, considerate to, <laughs> to my wife. So it's the same with the Holy Spirit, right? You can do life as a believer without the Holy Spirit, but you will find things much tougher. You know, it's not the way we're designed to be. And the helper has tools for you in your life that you've got no idea 
even exist. And with the Holy Spirit inside you, all this wonderful fruit grows. Who's heard of things called the fruits of the Spirit? Yeah? They're great. Let me tell you about the fruits of the Spirit. Here they are. Ta-da! Galatians 5. Uh, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, which is great. So if we're to give life to every community around us, let's be a fruit tree. Yeah, Let's produce good fruit. Maybe your neighbor really needs some love, some joy, some peace. Let's share that. And the thing about a fruit tree, a fruit tree doesn't strain to produce its fruit. It's not hard work for it. It just does it, right? You know, it just produces this fruit. And it's not in your own strength and it's not in your own effort. These things will will just follow. They will just happen. So, good news. For those of you who've never invited the Holy Spirit in before, for maybe you've been a person that said, Maybe people like me, you know, can't feel God. Well, today I'm telling you, maybe a person like you, someone like you, can feel God and can feel the Spirit inside you. God really, really, really wants to meet with his people, with you, and will use anybody and anything, including little old me stood at the front here, um, to, to tell you about this and to give you this invitation. So if you're tired of living in your own strength, like the futon story, aching by doing things on your own, then there's good news for you today. Maybe you're leaning on something other than the Spirit, and it won't sustain you. So I'm just going to take a moment. I'm going to do something not very life churchy. I'm going to kind of pause in the middle of what we're doing here, and we're just going to pray together. I'm not going to ask anyone to raise their hands, not going to ask anyone to get up and move around or or do anything like that. We're just going to take a moment together. So perhaps we can close our eyes. And if you would like to receive the Spirit for the first time, then why don't you pray along with me? Father God, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this opportunity just today to take a pause. Thank you, Jesus, for your death on the cross that you died for me. And Jesus, I'm fed up of doing things on my own and in my own strength. And I ask you to give me right now that gift of the Holy Spirit that you promised. I thank you, Father. This gift is free. I can receive it freely and is given to me gratefully by you. I thank you that the Spirit is a guide, a revealer, a helper, and a teacher, and I receive your spirit right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All right. Good. So let me tell you a few more little things. What next? So if we've got the Holy Spirit inside us, how are we supposed to, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to kind of operate? And um, Paul gives us a clue in one of his letters to the early church. So this is it here. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. You may have heard of Paul. He was a famous uh, persecutor of early Christians, formerly known as Saul. Uh, he had an incredible conversion on the road to Damascus. We read about it in Acts 9. He had an encounter with God so amazing it left him temporarily blind. That's never happened in this church as far as I know. Um, But who knows? Anything could happen in the next half hour. Um, Timothy is uh, Paul's young kind of co-worker and prodigy. uh, Very good friend. The reason Paul is writing to Timothy is Timothy is over in Ephesus and Paul is over in prison in Rome. I had a bit of a quick look on the map on that. It turns out it's over a thousand miles. That's a long way away. Okay, so they're a long way apart. So let me read it out to you. 2 Timothy 1, starting at uh, verse 3. I thank God, this is Paul writing in prison to Timothy, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience uh, in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as well. 
For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. So I believe I've got the gift of the Holy Spirit in me and have had for, for some time. Sometimes in me, the Holy Spirit is a roaring fire, okay? And sometimes it feels like the forgotten embers of a fire that is very much going out, if I'm honest with you. The Spirit is something that Paul encourages us to fan into flame, that gift of God which is in you. So I told you earlier, I'm quite a visual person. I'd like to show you a movie clip, okay? Have any of you seen a movie called Castaway, Tom, Tom Hanks? That's uh, Ben's favorite movie. So uh, 10 out of 10 Rotten Tomatoes from Ben. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit, a little clip from this movie. So those of you who haven't seen it, it's a great movie. Uh, so Tom Hanks, he's uh, got a job. He's uh, on a cargo plane, which has had to, has a problem, flies into a storm. It has to ditch into the sea. Uh, he's the only survivor. He manages to get into an inflatable life raft, uh, washes up on a small island. He's all on his own, has to learn how to survive. He's pretty soon, he's like drinking milk from coconuts. Um, but the only food he can find pretty much is raw fish. Okay, so this guy really needs some fire. Uh, he's been trying unsuccessfully uh, to make fire, but the first time manages to make just a tiny bit of smoke. Uh, and we're going to see what happens to him on his next attempt. So he manages to take the tiniest little bit of heat, give it the air it needed, fan it into flame, and lo and behold, he had a bonfire. He had warmth in the evening. He was able to cook his fish. I mean, I don't know about you, I don't want to eat raw fish for the rest of my life on an island. Uh, and, you know, he had a signal fire and all sorts of other cool stuff. And it's a bit like that with the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Um, you know, sure, you can eat the raw fish for the rest of your life, or you can fan into flame this wonderful gift that God has given you. It's fire for yourself and the benefit of all the others around you. So there's a couple of things from this uh, passage I just want to pull out really quick. Um, firstly, I want to say, verse 5, um, there is a heritage. So it says, I'm reminded, um, Timothy, of your sincere faith, a felt that faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you too. So you may have a personal heritage of faith. I'm very fortunate too. My parents were, were Christians, they love God. My grandparents were, um, I remember one of my grandmothers in particular. Um, you may not, and that's okay. Because one of the things I'm very aware of, God's been speaking to me about, is the heritage we have, you have, of being part of a church like this. The faith and obedience to God of people over the years of some of the wonderful and very ordinary people in this church, you get to stand on the shoulders of the faith of those who've gone before you. And by coming on this journey with us here at Life Church, you are part of that heritage and it is your foundation to have. Just want to touch really quickly on verse 6. There is sometimes some laying on of hands. 
Um, it's not some kind of, you know, Holy Spirit magic wand, you know, A plus B equals C. It doesn't quite work like that. Uh, it is mentioned a number of times in the Bible. But there are also plenty of examples where the spirit simply fell uh, in a certain place. It's all good, by the way. There is no magic form, there is what I'm trying to tell you. And lastly, I just want to pull apart the final verse for you a little bit, verse 7. Uh, this one here. For God gave us a spirit. So once again, it's a gift. It's good news, I keep telling you. Not of fear. Perfect love casts out all fear, we're told in the Bible. Um, God says in Isaiah 41, fear not, for I am with you. If you are someone who struggles with fear, as we all do from time to time, why not invite the Spirit to come in and fill you so completely that there is no room left in your life for any fear? But of power and of love. God's Spirit is powerful and love is a fruit of the Spirit. We read in 1 John, God is love. God's love will fill you and flow out to others around you. I guarantee you that once God's spirit has come in and filled you, it, you, the love will just ooze out of you. And your friends and neighbors will say to you, what is it with you? You know, why is it? It's like Mim's story early, you know, I know what I'm going. I know my purpose. And it's, it's attractive. People are going to want it. And that's that love from the spirit. And lastly, of self-control. Sometimes the world's ways and the ways of our own human mortal flesh are in conflict with God's ways. It says in Galatians 5, um, but I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Holy Spirit gives us the fruit of self-control and helps us to resist that temptation to go back to the ways of the world and our kind of old ways. All right, so what's our response? I'd like to do a bit of fanning. So. Where's my lovely band? I can see one of my band. If my delightful band could come back up. I can see two of my band. There we go. Um, <laughs> so what I'd love to do, I'd just love to spend a bit of time. I've deliberately got lots of time left, which is great. Just soaking in that spirit, just doing a bit of fanning with yourself or, or with a friend. So what we're going to do, we're just going to spend a little bit of time just being in the spirit, maybe praying together, maybe worshiping together. And there's, there's two different ways that you might like to do this for now. Firstly, you might like, as you sit there, just a bit of time for yourself. You just might wanna be there with yourself for a few minutes, just receiving that love from God, receiving that spirit, fanning yourself into flame, taking that ember that may be inside of you and just let it grow and let it build and let it become that bonfire we saw. So that might be something you'd like to do on your own. You might want to go and find a friend. So I know the chairs here really don't make it very conducive, but you might want to look around the room, even in this moment, and lock eyes with one of your good friends that you might want to get together and just pray for each other. Um, maybe you want to consensually lay a hand on each other's shoulder and just pray for each other, and between you, fan into flame that gift that is with you. Uh, so that spirit inside you can be fanned into flame. Um, maybe a little bit later, we'll um, invite some of you to come up the front if you specifically like someone to pray for you. Not that there's anything special out the front. It's not like this is Holy Spirit zone and that is not Holy Spirit zone. None of that stuff. Um, but what we're going to do, we're just the, the guys and girls are just going to play for us for a little bit. And I would encourage you to do one of those two things. You, you're welcome to be a bit noisy and move around and go find your friends if you want to. Um, if you'd like to have somebody pray with you, find somebody you know and trust uh, and pray together. Um, and if you don't want to, then I'd encourage you just to sit there and just invite that spirit once again to be fanned into flame inside of you. And then after a little while, we'll, we'll come back and take it from there. Let me pray for us. Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this place. I invite you to come and fan that spirit that's inside of me into flame. Because I don't want to be a puff of smoke. I don't want to be an ember. I want to be a bonfire for my friends and for my neighbors and for my extended family and for those around who don't know you. And I can't do it in my own strength. And I don't want to try. So, Holy Spirit, come. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are a good gift. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We do not need to fear you. I thank you. You are a good and perfect gift for every one of us. So in this moment, I just invite you just to reach out to Father God, to fan into flame that spirit inside of you. If you want to get up and find a friend, go and pray with them. Maybe you want to pray with the person next to you. Maybe you want to be on your own. However you want to do it. Let's just take a bit of time.